Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Bhagam Radian here at the Excel Center in London covering DSCI, one of the world's truly great air, land, sea, space, cyber, uh, and security shows. Our coverage here is sponsored by L3 Harris, Leonardo DRS. Our coverage is in partnership with Clarion Events that uh, puts on this event and so many other great conferences around the world in Brazil, Japan, uh, Bahrain, and elsewhere. And we are working with the UK Department of International Trade's Defense and Security uh, Organization to bring you the very best of British uh, defense. And we're honored to have as our first uh, interview retired British Army Major General Roddy Porter, uh, who is the spokesman here at DSEI. Sir, it's always an honor and pleasure, and thanks very much for having us oh, back. Great pleasure, Vega. Thank you very much. And um, uh, it's great to be at DSEI once again. This is my uh, second show as spokesman, but I was engaged with DSEI for many years as a uh, uh, a procurer of military capability within the UK Ministry of Defence. So it's very interesting to see it from this perspective as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, book ended very well and you were in uh, in office at the time when uh, UK was trying to rush a lot of equipment out uh, to the field. Mark Goldsack as well, Brigadier, who's the uh, uh, Defence and Security Organisation Chief, was also part of that process to work with scientists, uh, academia and elsewhere to pump capability down. So I know that there are a lot of people who are very thankful for uh, for your efforts and everybody on, on the MOD team. Uh, let's talk a little bit about major themes. Uh, yes. It's a uh, challenging time, I think we can say, for, for British politics, uh, but um, still at a time when a lot of focus on increased spending, delivering capability, defense has had a couple of bumps. What are going to be the major uh, themes that we're going to experience? You guys have a tremendous conference, so as most people watch this, that conference will be underway, the Joint Service Conference on the first day, and then four days of, of DSEI here. Talk us through some of the major themes and trends we're going we're gonna to see. Certainly. Well, I think those uh, conferences that you alluded to are really important. They've become increasingly significant as the day zero, if you like, of, of DSCI. Uh, and in the uh, aerospace uh, arena, we have talked in the past about the air sector and air capability. This year, uh, as an innovation, really, we're focusing very much more on aerospace and looking uh, quite uh, uh, closely at uh, defense capabilities in space. Uh, C2, uh, defense of uh, uh, coalition assets in space, that kind of thing, and how the space sector plays out, not only in how we manage space, how we use space, how we will defend, how we will fight as coalitions in space, but also um, looking at uh, how uh, space technology can be applied and spun out into the military environment, if you like. So I think that's one of the significant areas. I think in terms of theme, uh, transformation is a big theme uh, this year at DSEI. Uh, looking specifically at uh, artificial intelligence, uh, looking at machine learning. How can we use that plethora of uh, transformational capabilities that are out there, very many of which are in the civilian market? How can we spin those into um, our, our military capabilities? Uh, one of the focuses we've got this uh, year is on uh, engineering skills, for example. There is a dearth of engineering skills in the UK widely, and I suspect um, in the international arena. So how can we focus on learning? How can we focus on interesting uh, people in science and the scientific application into the military environment? Um, uh, and so, uh, th so that's very, very important. Um, and I think that uh, two other themes which are going to be important. One is the supply chain. Uh, in my experience, the supply cha chain is becoming more and more important. Uh, for DSCI and this year we've set up an ex a supply chain exchange where uh, the uh, uh, procurers and engineers within the defence sector can look at who do I want to uh, really meet at DSCI, who do I want to have a serious conversation with SMEs and contractors uh, uh, about uh, developing s supply chain capabilities. So that's another important uh, area. And then I think I, s I mentioned innovation. I think the Defence Innovation Unit is going to be very busy uh, this year with the uh, Defence and Security Accelerator and the uh, I innovation units of the frontline commands, focusing on how can we get from idea to impact. Uh, and I think a lot of that will bring in technologies and ideas from outside of the defence sector in other um, capability areas where um, innovation has proven to be a force multiplier, both in terms of how we can build our teams, how we can develop equipment capability and put the whole piece together. Uh, and that's very much needed in defence. So that's going to be an exciting area uh, for us to look at this week as well. 
Um, I was uh, going to say that uh, the mark of a professional soldier has always been to think about logistics and supply chains, because uh, right, amateurs talk tactics, professionals uh, talk uh, logistics, and I know that in a great power context, uh, there's a lot of focus on getting all of those uh, logistical pieces, but although you were talking about it from a supply chain from the st standpoint of the companies here. Um, every year, um, the show always tries to outdo itself, have new features, uh, make things a little bit uh, smoother. Obviously, the big uh, entry area was new last time in order to try to streamline uh, the badging process. Walk us through, uh, from the user experience standpoint, some of the features you guys are developing to try to make that uh, uh, experience uh, better, because one of the key things about this show is everybody is under one roof. So in the course of four or five days, you're going to actually have a lot of richness. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I think it's one of the greatest shows in the world. Talk to us about how you guys are, you know, the innovations that exhibitors and attendees are going to see this year that's going to be improving uh, the quality of life and the impact they get out of the show. Well, I think we, um, first of all, we've tried to marshal the sectors uh, better. So the joint sector uh, under whose roof we have medical um, and we have uh, uh, C2 um, and a range of capabilities. So um, specifying by sector how people can get at capability, I think that's, uh, that's really important. One of the exciting things is that DSAI continues to expand uh, year after year and um, and Clarion um, who are responsible for running this uh, have beaten their hard and their stretch targets in terms of uh, if you like selling square meterage of floor space to defense contractors we've got um, uh, 1700 uh, contractors this year which is which is great um, and that is bringing in a whole range of new capabilities um, from across um, the international defense community uh, we've got 44 national pavilions uh, this year, that's four more than last year, um, and, uh, and and there's an excitement over uh, the way that nations generally want to display what capabilities they have, as well as ob obviously looking around to see what capabilities can meet their own defence requirements. Um, uh, we have uh, a significant um, uh, list of keynote speakers this year, which I think is going to be um, a, a major uh, attraction for um, those visiting uh, the, uh, the um, exhibition, over, particularly over the Tuesday and the Wednesday. Uh, Secretary of State for Defence, the Right Honourable Ben Wallace will be speaking. Uh, Chief of Defence Staff will be sharing a platform with the Permanent, under, permanent Undersecretary, Sir Stephen Lovegrove. Uh, we have the chiefs of all the, um, uh, of the, the single services and the uh, chief of, uh, joint, uh, the, of the joint force as well. Uh, we have the chief executive of the Defence Scientific Laboratories uh, speaking uh, also, as well as, um, uh, as well as the Cabinet Secretary, which I think makes an important point about the centrality of defence and security within the, uh, within the context of, of government and of the prosecution of, of foreign policy. One of the interesting ways that DSAI seems to have developed over the last two or three uh, exhibitions, to, um, uh, to my knowledge, is the extent to which security has become much more of a feature, much more important. And I think the, the name of the, uh, of the exhibition, Defence and Security Equipment International, gives the game away to an extent. But actually we're seeing a lot of focus now uh, on security and, um, uh, and in the joint uh, uh, arena, in the global theatre uh, this year, there's a daily focus uh, on security and that ranges right across the piece from uh, CBRN protection to C2, about how, how we can deal with malicious use of the internet, uh, how we can both use, uh, how we can use uh, drone technology and, and protect ourselves from drone technology, um, that sort of thing. So that's another interesting area where, where we're seeing developments and I think hence the significance of the Cabinet Secretary um, coming to speak to us. Uh, it's uh, it is extraordinary, and you were saying um, whether it's uh, you know anti-nuclear technology or cyber, and you see uh, how many. Um, not just drone, but counter drone systems yes. uh, as well, given the, the concerns associated with that. So let me ask you a last uh, question about numbers. Uh, where did you guys end up last year in terms of total attendance? You know, you talked a little bit about more pavilions, more uh, contractors, 1,700. Um, where were you on the final attendance figures uh, last year? And I'm not necessarily going to hold you to it, <laughs> but how do you think you guys are going to do this year? Because I know you guys have been working to try to cre yes. keep growing and expanding, yeah. uh, not just the show here, but the Clarion family of events all around the world. Well, I think we're excited, and I think uh, our aim clearly has been to outdo ourselves year on year as a metric. But I think it's important, you know, as people understand the significance of this exhibition to uh, actually come here. We're, we're hoping, of course, the, the, the exhibition is not yet open, but we're hoping that during the course of this week we'll see about 35,000 uh, people through the door. 
um, uh, from the international community, ranging from um, uh, procurers of uh, defence capability to the user of defence capability and, and their ministers. Uh, and that will significantly outdo um, what we saw last year. So we're confident, based on um, how the uh, pre-season, if you like, has developed and the interest that's been generated in DSCI, that we're going to get, say, in the region of 35,000 people. And that would be a good success for us, I wow. think. Uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. You saying uh, preseason, you know, because these shows really are, you know, you're in the preseason. You guys have been uh, in World Cup for the last two years. Yeah. Um, uh, all the best, sir. A retired uh, British Army uh, Major General Roddy Porter, who is the spokesman for DSCI here. Sir, it's always an honor and pleasure. Uh, thanks, thanks very much. Very much. Break, break a leg all week, but Thank we're going to manage to see you all the time. And on, uh, towards the end of the week, hopefully we can manage to talk again. I hope so. Enjoy the show. And uh, it's really good to see you. Thank you.